Hi everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. My name is Pankaj Tingra and as you all know me by now, I am a proud Fintrammer. And you know why am I a proud Fintrammer? I am a proud Fintrammer because of my students, my friend, because students really, really make us feel proud. And that is one of the reasons, my friend, today I wanted to bring this session to you. Yes, my friend, today I'm sharing one another success story with you. Another success story of a proud Fintrammer and she scored 74 marks in the strategic business leader exam in her first attempt, my friend. And that is the reason I thought it is all the more a reason to bring this, bring this video to you, to share with you as to what she did the way she did. Isn't that, isn't that an exciting, exciting video for you? Yes, my friend. And to get these kind of excited videos, do subscribe to our channel, my friend, Fintram Global, for keep getting the latest videos and the updates. Now, coming on to the student who scored 74 marks in the first attempt in the strategic business leader exam, I'm talking about Abhinandita Das, my friend. She's the one and she scored, scored these many marks in her first attempt. And I really wanted wanted to reach out to her, to really talk to her and of course request her to be here to talk to you and share with you various things that she did and of course various things that she wants to share with you as the do's and the don'ts of this exam so that you do not do those mistakes. You are there from the standpoint of clearing this exam in the best possible way. Isn't that a great news? Yes, sir. Should we go and check that out? Yes, sir. And of course, my friend, while we are going through this video, while we will go through the detailed discussions with the with the Abhinanta Das, I really want that if you are also planning to give the ACC professional level exams or of course the strategic business leader exam and have any concerns, questions that you may want to ask us, do post on into the comment box over here, my friend. We will certainly pick it up and try answering that to the best of our capability. Should we now go and talk to the Abhinandita? Yes, sir. All righty. Hi, Abhinanta. How are you feeling? I'm feeling a bit surreal right now after getting the SBL results the last week. Oh, yes. And for sure. Yes. For sure. It yeah. And, and it, it had to be like that. For sure. Yeah. So, I stayed up till 4.30 in the morning because I couldn't sleep. I was like, I need to see the results before I go to sleep. And <laughs> obviously, after attempting the paper, I had a feeling I did well. But, you know, with papers like professional exams, you never really know exactly where you stand. But when I saw that I got 74, I was more or less, I was just like, <laughs> okay, <laughs> did not expect this to happen. But yeah, it's a good feeling. No, and, and no doubt, you know, I, all I can tell you is scoring 74 in the strategic business leader exam, which is an ACCA professional ex level exam is something commendable and that is one of the reason I can tell you and there are many reasons to it but that is one of the reason I really wanted to spend time with you in terms of understanding more from you as to what really worked for you and what you really want students to really know as to what can you know what can really work for them too so that's the the mantra that's the agenda I just wanted to set the stage so that you know we can really take this discussion forward but before we really go in there you know I think the the best point to start this discussion is that we should know who um you know Abhin Abhinanta Das is in terms of the background and of course having an introduction from yourself and of course we knowing the girl who scored like 74 marks in this in strategic business leader exam in in September 2022 exam important is that we should really know her first and then we should we should kick start this further okay so as obviously my name is Abhinanta Das and I belong from West Bengal but I've been living in Pune for the last five, six years. And I just graduated my bachelor's degree this year only from Symbiosis course. And there I studied BCom with uh, ECCA, their integrated program. So during that, I did attempt three of the other papers, the skill level papers, and I passed them in the first attempt as well. And after graduation, I really thought that this is the time I can take to really uh, attempt the professional level exams because the level of uh, the level of not like studying that goes into this and the level of like concentration that it takes i felt like i need to fully 100% give it give my all right now 
so yeah it was uh, it was tough i'm not going to lie because right after my graduation ended i started studying for the sbl exam and then initially i thought maybe this is too much this is too vast or like maybe i can't do it but as and when i started watching the lectures and watching the revision mock tests and doing the questions myself i realized that it's not really rocket science like if your concepts are clear and you can go forward and be confident i think that's that's all you need and and not to forget you know you must have seen my lectures and you know it i yes. keep saying that that off and on that this is the most common sensical exam around the yes. world yes yes and all that it this really need is to have that uh, bent of mind that common sensical thoughts that you would apply in any given situation that you may force yeah. anywhere in the professional world and if you can really communicate that better to the examiner you know, saying that you know this is what Ooh. it is and yes. this is how i would be doing in this kind of a scenario and of course include uh, you know the 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 bread and butter of this exam which is like the format the professional yes. and so on and so forth if you are there then you know sky is the limit and you know of course marks can be exceptional yes. like you really got I think the one that helped me the most was getting into the role of what we got. When you kept on saying graph P's and everything, I used to literally write it down. And I, even in the paper, I <laughs> first and foremost after reading the introduction, I was like, let's write down the graph P's and keep that in mind and go forward. And I think getting into the role of the external consultant, I, it really helped me because I knew exactly how to approach the question and how to answer the questions from that tone itself. i completely agree and that's the reason i always say the raft p is your raft to clear the strategic business leader okay. exam because this can really get out of the sea of of sbl because this and again you know while we may say raft p is and you know the other mnemonics at the end of the day it is nothing but really getting on to the shoe of the person who is facing that issue there and at that point in time and then understanding that and then replying back in the best possible manner that's what in nutshell this exam is all about and that's what i keep saying in my sessions and i'm sure you know i'm glad that that it worked for you mm -hmm. but uh, you know abhinandita if i really have to ask you in terms of you know how so i am i'm more getting granular now in terms of understanding you said that you started after graduation and you you know kick started this journey how much time it took you to like um um you know prepare for the entire spl exam when do you took when, when you took the fintram sessions you know and of course how much time you spent on that and how much you did in terms of those sessions and then the revision boot camp i i'll be curious to understand that uh so it took me around 2 months if i if i'm saying it in broader terms it one and a half to 2 months yes that was when i was sure that yes okay i can i attempt this exam but yeah i watched the lectures like twice uh, Uh, because the first time i watched it the concepts were getting clearer in my head and after that when i watched it the second time i really got to feel like i'm understanding even deeper how to exactly go on about each and every part of the syllabus and i think the thing that helped me the most from the beginning was that i realized that for sbl i can't just you know think in the direction that i have to write just this i have to see it from the overall point of view like even in the question i think in the examination one thing that helped me was that even if it was an exhibit 6 related question in the paper i knew that i had to somehow relate it to the intro or somehow relate it to the company's background and not just focus on what was given in the exhibit 6 and that is something that was drilled in my head because of the revision like boot camp that you did because you were always putting pressure on the fact that think the company as a whole think of it as the whole thing just don't just look at the exhibit that you're seeing and i think uh for all doing the lectures I, i honestly thought it would take more study i thought it i going in i was like i need to you know devote my like 10 12 hours a day and i was like this is going to be very tough but just doing your lectures and revising that at night and just going over the points that i had made the notes that i made really helped me and i think just that was enough because i don't think rote learning is necessary in sbl so if you know exactly what the concepts are and if you can just remember those and keep thinking about them and keep applying your common sense to that i think that really helped because uh in the rest of the papers i found myself 
studying the study text a lot and like feeling like i have to study every single line because you don't even know what will come but in sbl i honestly didn't even study their study text that much i just as you say like the revision that i did and the uh, the notes that i made based on your lectures that was enough like max to max i studied maybe 4 to 5 hours and that was enough like i never felt like i was doing less or that oh my god maybe i'm like not giving my 100% it felt like whatever i'm learning it's getting registered in my head so i can apply it better in the examination um, and you know i i'm 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 relished by by hearing that because uh, it is not the quantity of the hours that you really put in it is it is more to do with the what what exactly you need to study i think that is that is equally important there and that is the reason you know you since you you are a fin trammer you are a proud fin trammer you know that the kind of emphasis that we that we do in our sbl session is not on the theory but on yes. but you know but it is all the more about the practical examples of the industry you know and yes. you can pick up any session you know we have we have yes, so many lot, examples you know on, and we explain the concept with the help of an example and i think yes. that really sticks on you know when you yes. when you really you know yes. try to uh, answer that anywhere you know elsewhere sorry you were saying something Oh, it's just I just remember that uh, when you were teaching the pestle analysis and Porter's five forces and for, like the pyramid and everything, like if you hadn't given us examples for each and every thing, I think it would get confusing because knowing where to apply what is something that you can only understand with the help of an example. Because even in the question in the examination, we had to apply pestle analysis based on a swarm uh, analysis that was given and. in that it it's very it's very easy to get confused to apply what in which in what situation so knowing keeping the examples in the mind and it really helped in knowing that okay this is what the question is asking this is how i should approach this entire question in the exhibit so yeah the examples really st- stuck on more than more than theory more than anything and and thank you for that so uh- <laughs> you know abinandita more on the uh, on the strategy side so you took like two and a half kind of yes, months to prepare yes. for this exam you did the entire fin tram sessions in terms of the curriculum and then you revised the boot camp also and if i have understood rightly you did it two times in terms two of times. It really being yes. there now uh, did you did anything in addition to that you know because many of the students they really come on to me and i'm sure you know this was the same question that you also asked when you know you were doing the content and many of the students really do ask uh, and i do have an answer to it but i really want to hear it from the from the from your mouth in terms of you know do you do, do you really think that there is a need of doing anything else then you know what we did or uh, you know you did something more too you know i'm just trying to understand no i really did not like uh, as i said in the beginning maybe i was thinking that i knew need to do something more something extra but uh, i realized that there's really that it's just going to add to my stress the more i if I, if about like if in, in a session like what you're teaching if i go and do and something additional to it i think it will be more of an overwhelmed thing in my head i have i'd have too much information and that is never good for you know studying for a paper that has as vast of a syllabus as sbl does so then i was like it's as as long as i do the sessions well and as long as i keep like making notes small notes little little uh, notes in my head also it was enough like i didn't do anything additional i just did the lectures and the revision boot camp and read the technical articles and that was it like it was enough and and you know i i you know i'm happily happily with you on that because i do feel that all that you need to do and i'm sure you know you would have heard the same thing when in my sessions all that i think that you should you need to do in addition to the content that we provide and the revision boot camp is the past examination questions yes. so while we have covered a lot you know in the revision boot camp we have covered many questions of past exams but i do feel that you know if somebody has to do something more they have to practice the past exam questions because that is going to be the mantra you know if you if you have practiced few questions by your own hand then your life becomes much easier in terms of handling that when you would yourself sit in the exam i think that's that's the big big uh, thing that i have now you know, going back to the strategy you know wherein you started the preparation for two and a half three months 
are you working somewhere you know abhinandita you just yeah. for me to okay so it is a full fledged you know you being at home studying and of course doing what you're doing two and a half months at your desk doing what you're doing uh, you know you did the fin ram sessions two times and the revision boot camp and then of course practiced few past examination questions finally went in and sit for exam now if a student has to really ask you that what should be the uh, you know what should be the granular level strategy for this exam you know because you know while we being the faculty you know we we really call this out in the market to the students that this is what you should be doing but they always always want to hear from the folks who have just given the exam because they can really get inspired by them in terms of you know what has worked for you can or may also work for them so they really want to hear it from you as to you know what they should be doing so what would that be if you have to really suggest to the students i think most importantly going into this the biggest thing that you need to have is a routine like it really helped for me because uh, i knew that going to sleep i literally had i wrote down every single like uh, i made a timetable as per sessions and as per the syllabus areas and i gave myself a deadline that within this time i need to finish at least one viewing of this syllabus area and i knew every night that i went to sleep that tomorrow this is something that i'm going to tackle and that kept on that that is actually what had like worked for me because i knew that if i gave myself a time period and also a uh, you know uh, like a goal to go look forward to every day then i think the satisfaction level that you get at the end of the day that you did this what you planned on doing i think that that is something that i think uh, has always worked for me and even in this situation is no different because i think getting a level of satisfaction is important when it's very easy to get overwhelmed by the number of things that you need to do so knowing that okay i think making a timetable is very important like knowing exactly when you should do what but also give yourself a few like don't don't make it very hard on yourself like know that this is my capability i'm not going to go over like i'm not going to do four five lectures in a day because that's just not going to register so keep it at 2 or maybe 3 if the lectures are shorter and just let yourself process that because i think having that time table and knowing that okay i two and you know it's even for me sometimes i wrote down that i'm going to do two lectures tomorrow but then i was like after doing the two lectures i got into the momentum so much that i was like okay let's do another one and that gave me an extra level of satisfaction then i was like okay i'm doing well So I think preparing for any big exam like this, the biggest thing you need to focus on is just giving yourself that time and that you know, pro- like processing time to know that okay, this is how I'm going to approach it, and having a clear view. Because if you go into it just being like, okay, I'm going to do the lectures and just do the boot camp and do the past examination questions and not give yourself a timeline, I think that is going to not help. Because that is like. okay time is running out time is running out i don't have that much time to do stuff so i think for me i think time table is a must like getting up at this time and knowing that okay after breakfast i'm going to sit down do this and write uh, write down the my notes and focus on what i'm doing and then based on that preparing for the next day always thinking of the next day when you're going to sleep the previous night because like if sometimes it gets like okay i'm not going to do it tomorrow like you know sometimes it feels like it may be getting too much maybe i need a break but that's why it's important to really understand yourself and where you stand that okay two lectures just two lectures just do it focus on the lectures write down your notes focus on what you're studying get the grasp of the syllabus area and it will it will just give you that satisfaction it will give you that motivation to go on forward so i think it's important to space it out like not keep overloading yourself just space it out make a time table as and when it works for you some people like some of my friends have it it has worked for them if they studied at night like the whole night and then because the there's no disturbances and you can study at peace but for me it's worked waking up early morning and studying for like the first few hours of the day and then just giving myself maybe one or two hour break and then revising what i did not giving myself that much time in the middle because then i'll just think about other things and then it won't get processed so i think making a time table i think it is really is the thing that helped me pass this exam you know even i am even i am a morning person abhinandita let me just tell you that i you know whatsoever i have studied in my life you know i have always been up like 4:35 in the morning 
and by the 5 in the evening i am almost done with what i needed to do i think the, the productivity is very high if you wake up in the morning yeah, and my productivity drastically goes down in the evening like <laughs> the moment i see the night you know even i am in trouble so and yeah. it's it holds you know even now it holds true you know if i have to study something i'm generally up in the morning and you know i'll study even i have to shoot something i'll shoot and then that is it but one important point that you brought on the table and i really want to call that out to all of the students that one important aspect and that this is not only for the strategic business leader exam but yes this holds true for the sbl exam too which is like having a right time table for yourself in terms of you know how one should be doing when and then uh staging it on a piecemeal basis you cannot do and you know come what may we cannot do anything and everything at one point in time we have to give ourselves also a space that you know what itna hi hoga that is what we can do after that we also need some kind of a break some kind of a rest and then only we can move on to the other things and so on so forth so very important and third piece which abhinandita i want to add on to what you mentioned is that i think can work for anyone and everyone is um, to ensure that they understand the overall content that they need to cover you know this is something i have felt many of the student really struggling with because what happens is that they they start cherry picking the content you know which is like this never comes in the exam yes. or this was lastly tested in the in the last attempt so let's not do it noops you have to cover the 100% of the content and that's going to be the key so knowing the entire content uh you know allocating it over a period of time and of course taking that on a piecemeal basis and having a strong or a or a a uh, rigorous time table around it is going to be the the basic that you that you really need to have to ensure that you do not miss on some of the very important things uh, the way you should be preparing for your exam so i think uh, you know very well covered abhinandita i just wanted to add one flavor to it in terms of you know that what i feel is that the entire coverage is very important you know so adding on to that adding on to that sir even i agree with it like a lot because when i attempted the exam like uh, in the past examinations there were because there was multiple choice because the levels are 60% multiple choice so there are things that you're like you know you cover more than the other parts and it it's maybe acceptable in those examinations because yes okay in audit risk is going to be you know it's going to come in the exam you know it so you know that you, the questions that you practice for risk is going to be more in number but for sbl i feel like you just cannot leave anything out like even in the examination i feel like in some way or the other every single part of the syllabus was tested like and, and even if it wasn't directly mentioned in the question like if you can add on to it and you know the content you know how what to apply where i think it's only going to add to your answer it's not going to take away anything so i feel like it's very important to learn the content agreed and and then there are different ways that examiner tests you in the exam even he will not ask you you know for example you know let's say he's giving you a question of a risk and again i'm just getting on to the sbl you know faculty mm-hmm. issues right now you know if let's say he gives you a question on the risk and he may not be asking you something in relation to let's say internal control he's only asking you with in relation to external risks that an organization is exposed to but if you bring in that internal control flavor into it examiner really sees you you know a well rounded well uh, you know deserved strategic business leader on the ground and that's what he really aspire you to to really demonstrate over there in the exam and i'm sure abhinandita you would have seen this in the lectures that i keep saying this like a broken record that you have to have to have to come across as a strategic business person in the exam you do not have to have a microscopic approach in the exam you have to be a business leader who would think like a business leader the pluses and the minuses what may go wrong is something that you should always have in your mind and if that go wrong what can you do in that kind of a scenario is something that examiner likes to understand and that's where you know the the you can really make a big difference uh, in comparison to your left and the rights and the fronts and the back because that's what make you you know really feel differentiated over there and you're bang on on that 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 you know understanding the overall content may not be directly tested in the exam but indirectly examiner loves to understand that do you know it or not we are a fentramer sir we, we really know that and we really understand that all right 
good abhinandita i think uh, i think it was good abhinandita very nice you know we understood the perspective we understood you know uh, how you prepared for it if you know clearing strategic business leader exam in first attempt with 74 marks is huge huge achievement so you know many congratulations for that again and again i'm saying that very important for you to really really know that this is a big achievement and you should really take it to your credit but if i really have to ask you as a student my friend that what is one thing that you should that you would say student that you should be, be you should be really aware of the isbil exam and you should not do in the isbil exam then what would that be this is also something you've mentioned and uh, now that i've given the exam i can really like give 100% guarantee on it that it's true it's that don't get overwhelmed by looking at the size of the question because it is going to be big it is going to have five to six exhibits it's going to be long the questions are going to have four to five parts sometimes and even looking at the marks you will feel like oh my god this is for 24 marks like i have to do something and i think uh, panic is something that is just not acceptable in any way like if you're panic just leave that outside of your room when you're getting in there to write the exam because if you're panic then i think you're you're already losing time you're losing your focus and you're losing whatever you've learned like you tend to doubt yourself more and i think just reading the question understanding what the question is trying to tell you in one go reading it with utmost focus is very important because when i saw the question it was easily 12 to 13 pages long if i have to put it in a page basis but i was like okay let's do it intro then exhibit 1 then exhibit 2 and i never thought of the questions like i read the questions but i didn't think that okay 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 let's think about the question here let's i read the exhibits first and then i linked the questions to the exhibits and figured out okay this is something that i can write there but i think not getting panicked and not getting overwhelmed at the size of the question is very important because this is obviously something anybody who's attempting sbl for the first time it's something that most of us have seen for the first time such a level of question coming in an exam for 100 marks of single case study and it's very easy to feel like i may not be able to cover the whole thing but i think just having the focus and belief that okay if i read this once if i read this once it's not written in some different language i can understand it in one go and then obviously as in when you require to Uh, refer to the exhibits and writing the questions that's okay because sometimes you have figures that you need to quote and something like that but uh, apart from that i think reading the question giving yourself that time that 30 35 minutes at most to just read it to understand what they're trying to tell you is very important because uh, yeah i just think panic is something that's not that's not going to take you places in an sbl exam and i couldn't agree more on that you know and you would have seen me saying the same thing in that's, that's in exactly. in revision boot camp also that you know everybody would be facing the same question in the exam what really going to make difference over there is how do you really handle those four hours in the exam so the, you, there are two two choices that you may have my friend one to get panicked and another one to be the abhinandita das of the tape <laughs> at the time so it is your choice you know what you really want to be there and that's what you know i keep saying that like a broken record that you really have to have strength over there and of course to into uh, you know you have to be there and play it whatsoever it is you know and give your best best shot to it you know it is a very and you know you may be bored of me you know saying this thing again and again but this is a common sensical exam this is not a very traditionally tested a uh, concept based exam this is a very uh, generic general knowledge and of course conceptual knowledge common sensical based you know exam if you can apply those skills there and at that point in time you may not have read any model but if you would apply it there in terms of you know what one should be doing in this kind of scenario examiner would end up giving you marks provided you know the you know the 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 condiments of this exam like the formats like the professional skills you know, which examiner really loves to understand that do you really know that and abhinandita you would have seen that you know uh, the kind of emphasis that we try to do on the professional skills and of course on the formats and the reading and the writing skills is too much in terms of you know giving uh, the right content to ensure that you know it is not being missed on uh coming towards the end uh, uh, abhinandita i know this is more to understand you know uh, uh, what 
kind of uh, issues you faced in in your exam so if i just have to ask you the issues that you faced i'm sure you know you would have somewhat somewhere struggled uh, so you know how did you I, i think you wrote the mock exam right to which yes. i replied and and gave you the the comment on i i don't remember you know kind of issues that you you know you did on that exam you would have seen my revert i would have mentioned few things over there but i have to now ask you what kind of issues you faced in the exam then what were that okay um, i think mainly it i am going to be very obvious with this but the time because at the beginning in the beginning i was sure okay i'm answer but the thing is with sbl exam is when you finally get what the question is trying to tell you you try to cover as many points as you can because sometimes it's not like you can mention two three points and be like okay this is enough because sometimes a question like for example we got a question on uh, test and analysis or responsible leadership in those questions you feel like okay adding one more point because it was mentioned here or you you feel like you should write it because it's important to the organization and so in the beginning i wrote it and i was confident with the time but then towards the end i feel like i was like okay okay i just have 40 minutes left and i have to attempt big question <laughs> so now i need to really like just write what's important and like maybe maybe forego some of the points so i think getting like for me i did kind of struggle in the middle of the exam because i was writing too much like i was writing too, too many points were coming into my head and i was like i okay the, con- the organization can do this and they can do that so i think it's more important to keep that in your head like just think about four five points that you will write and elaborate on that because the more you think there are going to be a hundred alternatives to what you can suggest in that question so if you keep thinking of everything then obviously your time is going to run out and you won't have time for because you know do, towards the end you normally have the questions where you have to write the slides and stuff and that is more on theoretical knowledge or something that integrated reporting that you have to write based on your knowledge so in those questions you need to have that kind of time to write what you know so instead of wasting time in thinking that okay maybe this maybe that you should just write what comes to your head first based on what you know and then just be okay with that don't feel like okay the examiner is going to okay if i write two more points the examiner is going to give me two more marks i don't think that that's what happens in exams like this if you're even writing for, for five six points and they are perfectly like make sense and are articulate i think that's enough because time is going to time is going to feel like your biggest biggest like problem in that room because you constantly and the clock is ticking right in front of you so you know that okay and when it comes to under an hour is the panic really starts to set in that okay i have this much to do and like the seconds are going by the minutes are going by but i think so the i think that that i struggled with during the end i was like maybe i can't finish this exam maybe i i have to leave the last like 5 6 marks but then i did finish it <laughs> thankfully but i think if i had to change anything about what i attempted i would really not get carried away in the middle of the exam like when you answer one question nicely you feel confident and you answer like the next question in that momentum and you sometimes it is like normal to lose focus of what you should be writing and what is unnecessary in the bigger sense of the word so i think it's necessary to just think that okay this is what i should write and not anything more because this is i am confident that this is enough so i think that's that's what <laughs> I, and i agree with you you know that's this is this is one of the area you know one one should be really looking at and especially in sbl exam time is of a real essence and if you are missing on time in terms of you know what one should be writing that's going to be a big time problem any which ways because you would not be able to end the exam in the rightful manner and you would not be able to complete the exam come what may which is again you know i think is is certainly going to be something that to be to be looked upon so abhinandita you know uh, very good i think we have covered most of the pointers that i wanted to in terms of understanding your strategy the, the time that you spent you know i i wanted to understand you know the kind of issues that you face the kind of you know things that you would want to mention to the students in terms of you know how they should be thinking about this exam uh, there are a few you know i think things that i i really want to call out because you know we being the fintramer and i being the sbl faculty on the ground i i keep saying that that you know we do this we do that uh, you know understanding from you and now getting you know you know a face time feedback from you you know how do you how do you find fintram strategic business leader classes or sessions for yourself how do you how do you rate them how do you consider that 
uh, helpful for your exam you know what would that be and and no no partiality it is it is oh, no. on the record i just wanted to have it <laughs> from the horse's mouth to the students that you know this is what you know uh, somebody feels about you know what what has been delivered so oh, i'll be completely honest uh, so the last skill exams that i passed i didn't score as well i just passed and it was enough for me i was like okay i passed in first attempt that's that's great that's amazing and as someone who never expected to get 74 in an exam like sbl because i was scared going in i think it's not going to be an exaggeration to say that fintram is the reason behind that because i really felt like i don't know the panic that i felt just knowing that sbl is such a big exam just kind of went away the moment i started doing the lectures because it all started looking achievable it started looking like if i just you know focus on what you were saying focus on the examples and just just listen to you properly and with utmost concentration i don't need to panic about what is going to be like on the exam day because i think fintram really helped me with knowing that it's just important to have the holistic approach to the whole sbl exam and the questions that you're getting plus the syllabus and i think it was also all the more easy to understand i think that's the biggest thing because sometimes you know it gets like sometimes things are tough to understand in other like lectures or something that they'll use terms or they'll use examples that maybe people who who are not working yet may not you may find difficult to understand because we're not in a professional environment yet we just for students so now but i think with sbl the examples were so practical something that we've seen growing up or something we've heard going around or some companies that we see daily that it was like okay this is something that okay so we'd seen daily life it's not like rocket science i think that's the biggest thing that fintram gave me it was the belief and the faith that it's achievable it's not like you it's not like you can't do it and it's not i feel like i feel like most of the people who take lectures from fintram will agree with me i think it was very easy like it didn't feel like okay i am doing this i'm doing this and i have to like you know do extra things and anything it felt like okay it's like just do the lectures just listen to what sir is saying and that's enough you don't need to think all night long that oh my god oh my god oh my god maybe i can't finish the syllabus because your your sessions were very well rounded i feel like because we covered everything it didn't as i said i didn't even feel like the need to touch the study text i was that sure i was like whatever is important and whatever is necessary i think i've covered it because of the lectures and the revision boot camp and everything plus and i'll also put emphasis on the professional skills because that is also something that is very important to the exam and i don't think like i don't think it would be easy for anyone to pass the sbl exam or get good marks if you did not put emphasis on the professional skills the way that you did i remember the last day before like my exam the only thing i did was just look through your slides for the professional skills because i was like okay this is evaluation this is an analyzation and this is commercial acumen and this is professional skepticism and it really helped me because not just listening from you over and over but also knowing that this is just getting those pointers that okay this is how you should approach it because nobody is going to teach you that and like so well in the real world because somebody is like okay analyze you can do that right analyze and evaluation you've to done that your entire life but this is different and i think that it was very well like taught and very well like the knowledge that i've gained is something that obviously going forward in the other acca papers also i'll keep that in mind and i'll know that okay this is how to apply this professional skill in this situation and i think it was just from the syllabus down to the paper everything was just very smooth i'd say because it really made me feel like okay i the person who was that scared two months ago before the paper i just slept Eight hours of good, like good eight hours of sleep, and I was like, I've done everything. <laughs> I've done what sir has told me. I've done the lectures. I've done everything. It's now I just have to not panic and give the exam exactly how I know how to do, and just that's going to be enough. So I think that faith is very important. Like for students like us, I know how much taxing it gets, like to study and like know that. at the end of the day just feeling like maybe i can't pass this exam that kind of doubt really kills the hope and the self confidence from within but i think with fintram i really felt like i could 
put my faith in you and also like knowing that you also instilled that same level of faith in me because you were i was like okay sir is teaching me and i am like everything that he's saying i am like registering in my head but you were also like every time in every session you were like there's nothing you can't do so i think that repetitive mantra really helps you because nobody is going to give you that much motivation in classroom people normally come in there like teaching and they're just like okay uh, that's their job right but i think for, with you the thing that i felt different was it was more about building that confidence that because it's important in professional level exams you can't attempt it based on just knowledge you have to have that confidence in yourself that i can do it so i feel like that is something fentram really instilled in me and i would forever be grateful for that <laughs> and and you know we are absolutely absolutely glad to hear that as a feedback and of course you know me as a faculty and of course we as an organization you know we always aspire and you know to 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 walk that path in terms of you know what you know a student should be doing and we are all the more all the more looking forward for your for your uh, success and i'm glad if i if i hear something like this from you and of course you know uh, as a student it really really uh you know is motivating for us in terms of you know that what we are doing is really making sense and of course we are able to contribute to your success one last thing that i have up in andita is on the on the mock exam because you know i i can tell you you know i have fought with many of the students for not giving me mock exam and uh, you know they may not have liked it yeah, i'm i'm sure you know they still feel that you know pankaj says so much about the mock exam it is not it, it is not important i i still remember you sending me the mock exam and i think i replied back to you maybe i i, I was i was delayed by a day or two if i'm not wrong but i did reply back to you and uh, how how did that help uh, abhinanta and i want that to to be registered with the student in terms of you know how a mock exam can really change their fortune it really can because uh, when you're studying just studying the content and if when you're just listening to the lectures and see okay even in the revision boot camp it's essentially you that's solving the questions and we just register what you're saying and write down notes but it's no never going to compare to the environment that you are in in the exam day because uh, i was also someone who felt like maybe a mock exam isn't necessary maybe i should just not do it but no definitely it's it's very helpful because that kind of pressure if you're putting yourself in that kind of environment before the exam you know exactly how to tackle it on exam day that is something that no one can teach you that is something you have to know on your own so i think doing the mock exam that is something that really made me feel like okay i know everything like i know how to attempt this it's not going to make me overwhelmed because if you're just studying the lectures if you're just reading the content if you're just listening to the lectures going on the exam day you're going to be like what is this because you know you're like what is this i this is i don't know how to attempt this and so it's going it's very important because that you need to after everything that mock exam is kind of like a test for yourself because you and it also gives you confidence because you're like okay i've attempted this so i can do this on the exam day as well so it's not like i don't know what i'm going into i know exactly what i'm going into and i know exactly how i'm going to approach it so i think that that really that students should really do it even if it feels like a chore at the time feels like maybe it's not going to help that much it really does wonders and you know one thing i you know i i must mention over here is there is a good amount of effort that goes on from our side my side you know in terms of reviewing the exam okay. you know for example when you would have given me the exam to check you know it will take me an hour or so to check anything and everything and you would have seen the detailed feedback that you would have got you know which is like question by question that this can be done differently this can be more this can be less now there is there is a reason behind we spend time on that because at the end of the day we want you to not to repeat that mistake what you're doing in the mock exam in your real exam so you really have to understand that and i really want to call that out to all the student fraternity that you should certainly be appearing for the mock exam it is very important especially for the sbl it is super important because sbl is something you have not given earlier exactly so you if you appear for it exam. if you appear for it you will know that you know this may go wrong our way and you may not do that mistake yes, definitely 
All right, Abhinandita. I think that is what I really wanted to cover. I really want to thank you. Thank you for being here. I I just wanted to hear from you, not only the feedback, but also, you know, your inspirational words for the student fraternity, your motivational things that you have done, what worked for you, what not worked for you. And of course, you know, what you think that may may help students fraternity at large. I just wanted to circle that down and I'm glad that we covered, I think, almost anything and everything that we really had to. Towards the end, I would say many congratulations, my friend. Having 74 in the SBL exam is just not a joke. And I really, really uh, want to congratulate you from the core of my heart. It, you really made me also proud, I can tell you, along with your parents. You really made me proud that, you know, uh, this is a big achievement. And I can tell you, you know, I'm, I'm glad that I have two two students this time who scored 74. So I do have one other student. Uh, she, she also scored 74. And I'm trying to reach out to her. You know, she's busy in her, in her audits these days. But, you know, uh, 74, uh, two students, you know, coming up with the 74 marks really makes me also feel proud that, you know, yes, things that we have really collated and, and, and got it over here is really, really working for the student fraternity. But one thing that I really want you not to forget is that my coffee is due, my friend. And <laughs> never I'm there in Pune and I'm sure soon I'll be there in Pune because we are talking to some of the institutions there. Whenever I'm there, you know, we would, would certainly catching up for a cup of coffee. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sir. Thank you, Abhinandita. Thank you very much for your time and all the best. And of course, if you need any support, any help, feel free and we'll be there to help and support you. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> right. Good evening. Good evening.